This is Don Hurst at Highland Hill Farm. He's a veteran from World War II. Pop, did you always follow your, the commands of your commanding officers? Absolutely. What If you were given a direct order and you failed to comply with it, what would they be called? They'd be in the jug. And what would that be called? Uh, I'd be going against all, all principles that I swore to when I went to enter the Army, obey and obey my officers and protect this country. Would that, if a group of officers failed to uh, follow out the lawful command of their commander-in-chief, i.e. military officers failing to follow through with the command of Barack Obama, would that be considered a mutiny? Yes, it would be. Okay. It appears that Bob Woodward's book is pointing out that our commanding generals were told by the president to come up with a plan, an exit strategy for Afghanistan. And this occurred last year. The generals only offered plans whereby an increase in troop strength would be forthcoming in their operational plans. Barack Obama did not like that. Barack Obama then, because he couldn't get the answers from the generals that he wanted, drafted his own policy and plan. Now, if a, if a group of officers fails to follow through on the command of the commanding general uh, officer or the president, they should either resign or they should be brought up on charges and court-martialed. But obviously Barack Obama didn't want to do that because Barack Obama's only interest was in not losing the support of the left-wing fragment of the Democratic Party that is supporting him. Now, this is a very serious allegation. Either we have officers in the military refusing to obey a lawful command, or we have a commander-in-chief who is reckless in his carrying out his duties as commander-in-chief. I, th I think he's absolutely reckless in, as a commander-in-chief in, in, in this particular situation. I think that Barack Obama is in over his pay grade. I don't think that he's qualified to be president, and I don't think that he has the necessary experience to run this country. There's not much we can do about it as a nation now. About the only thing we can do is perhaps to elect new leaders in this next coming election to try and mitigate the damages that this man is doing to our country. I don't know how you people feel in YouTube land, but please leave your comments as to whether you think Barack Obama should be replaced or if we should just linger on with him. I think it's time that American people rise up and face the music. We have an incompetent president who may also have psychological problems which I don't want to deal with because I'm not a psychiatrist, but it's obvious that the administration is dysfunctional. And when an administration is dysfunctional, it's dysfunctional because of the man on top, not a bunch of the little peons that are running the show. It's the man on top who is ultimately in charge. If the administration is dysfunctional, then the man at top is dysfunctional. He's way over his head. He's, He's over head. his pay grade, and I believe he knows it. This is a sad day for America. Yes, and I feel for the parents who have kids in the service. And uh, I know what it was like during World War II when my brother was killed. What, what a disaster that was to the family. And your daughter's husband was severely wounded in Fallujah. Yes. Had his back broken in a yes. car bomb. Yes. So our family has made the sacrifice. And there was... a. Uh, Actually, five of us, five boys, and we were all actually serving this country. And you always followed lawful commands in the military. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. This is Don Hurst, and I'm Bill Hurst at Highland Hill Farm on Route 313 in Fountainville. We're your conservative nursery. We only supply trees to conservatives. Hello, my name is Mike, and we're at Highland Hill Farm today, and I want to talk to you about how to water plants are in pots. And right here, right in front of me, is a good example of a plant grown in a pot. And we can see that it has a black plastic pot on it. 
And this black plastic pot, you can also see that by my shadow, that there is sun hitting this black plastic pot. And since the sun is hitting this black plastic pot, it warms up much faster than if it was in a red or in a white pot. So if we do have a pot like this, we have to make sure that we water it very well. For if the sun heats up the soil inside it too much, the plant will dry up faster and the roots will die if the soil is dry. So we gotta make sure that wherever side, wherever pot that we have, if it's facing the sun, doesn't matter if it is black or not, but if the sun is hitting it, we have to make sure that that side of the pot is always well moist. Another thing that we can also do when we're watering plants in pots is to make sure that we water them frequently. If we water them once a week with a real good dosing, it's not good as if you're going to water them three to four times a week and just making sure it's moist. Or if we let the pot dry out, the plant will die. With this media in it, with most media in pots, it's very porous. And with that porous means that the air can go in and out of the soil. And when it goes in, and when it comes back out, it can take water out of it as well. So with this porous media, media, we have to make sure that the plant remains moist in the pot. Hello, my name is Mike Hurst. I'm at Highland, Highland Hill Farm. And right here, we have our Niagara's that are four to five foot tall, which are a really nice size. And I want to talk to you about something that's going to happen to all evergreens this year as we get closer to the fall, and that's called fall needle drop. That if you look at the ground, you can see some of these yellow needles coming off. That is a symptom of fall needle drop. Every evergreen, every year, loses its needles in the fall. And what's happening is as the new growth starts hardening over, the plant can't support all the growth that it has. So it gets rid of its interior needles, and when it gets rid of it, people can see it sometimes as being yellow. And I guess if we uh, look into the center more, I guess this one over here is better, you can see that the needles do fall off into the center, usually towards the lower part of the tree. The reasoning for the lower part of the tree, not the upper part of the tree, is because the lower part of the tree gets less light than the upper part. So as the plant evaluates itself and which parts of the plants are producing more energy and which ones are not, the ones towards the lower are getting less sunlight, therefore getting less photosynthesis is contributing less to the plant therefore the plant does not the plant the tree itself does not view that part of the plant as important as the top part of the plant which you can see is very nice thick and full so as you look at your arborvitaes hollies spruce pine or any type of boxwoods or Japanese hollies you should see a healthy plant should lose between a fourth to a third of its needles every year during the fall it is a naturally occurring process that the plant does. And if you do see it and you see the needles falling down in the ground, don't scrape it up and take it away. What that is, that's the plant actually doing it fertilizing and putting mulch down on itself. What this mulch does is it creates the correct pH for the plant to grow in. And as the plant with this debris starts to break down, it gets released and the plant can uptake it again through its roots. So if you just let it sit there, and let it decompose on its own. It is part of the plant's natural system, and that is how healthy plants live. Okay, thank you very much, Mike. We're on Route 313 in Fountainville, PA. This is Highland Hill Farm, and we grow thousands of arborvitaes, pine trees, spruces, junipers, and we have lots of material for you to come to see at our 313 location. Give us a call at 215-651-8329. Thank you. These are our blood good Japanese maples here at Highland Hill Farm. We have larger sizes as well as smaller sizes and we also have weeping Japanese red maples and also green maples. So give us a call 215-651-8329. These are Bennett's Compact Hollies. A nice bush for a longer walkway, easy to maintain, hardy, and not expensive. So give us a call, 215-651-8329 at Island Hill Farm. These are dwarf nandinas. They get about three feet high. They'll have red foliage throughout the winter, white flowers in the springtime, and red berries in the late summer.